Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our finale of our Detroit Reverence franchise mode. So in last episode we had the season simulation and unfortunately we missed the playoffs for another time and uh, we're not going to win a Stanley Cup again so we only won one Stanley Cup in this entire franchise mode. But uh, the last year was kind of good in a sense from our offensive standpoint, but we just had really bad troubles of keeping the puck out in that, and then morale started to go down a little bit. So we ended up missing the playoffs by like 18 points, if my math is right, in our division. And then in terms of like in general, we missed by almost like. Actually, we did lose by 18 points because the last wild card spot would be the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, yeah, we were way out of a playoff spot. So, it was not really a great year for this team, unfortunately. But uh, at least we had guys like Caden Matthews produce pretty well. So, yeah, in this episode, we're just going to go through, like, the record book. We're probably going to look at player stats from all our entire team and stuff like that. We'll also take a look at the retirements and the awards for this season. And then that will be pretty much it, I think. So it'll be a lot shorter of an episode than my Atlanta Thrashers one because my Atlanta Thrashers one, which you guys would have already seen by now, is over an hour long. And the reason being is because I actually had to go through playoff matchups, not like this episode where I don't have to do that. So um, we do got one comment before I get into that sort of stuff. So it's from Hawksfan88. He says, tough way to end the series will be the ultimate troll by EA if they g even give you the th uh, top three pick in this year's draft. So... Uh, we will simulate up to the draft just for fun to see if we end up getting a good lottery pick, but obviously the draft is not going to even happen in this episode at all or at all. So first, let's take a look at our player stats because uh, a lot of these guys could end up retiring. So we want to get to their player stats first and we'll get to the record book and uh, that afterwards. And uh, then we'll simulate up to the awards and all that sort of stuff and get the retirements done then. So let's take a look at our player stats just to see how these guys finished their final seasons and just go through their careers kind of to an extent not fully but to an extent so Caden Matthews he's 36 years old now he's had a wonderful career I think I showed you guys actually a lot of their player stats at the end of the last episode if I'm not mistaken um, but yeah Caden Matthews had a really good career and if he was to come back for another year not retire then he would probably still put up a decent amount of points definitely one of the best playmakers I've had and he actually also puts up a decent amount of goals so if we are going to do like kind of like a Hall of Fame thing for this series, we need to have inductees. I would say he's definitely one of the guys that could make it into a like a channel Hall of Fame because he was almost point per game in his career. And he also had a good plus minus of plus 122, but obviously it dropped off kind of a little bit near the end with these minus 15s and stuff like that. And then in the playoffs, he was also a pretty good player, 91 points in 107 games. 27 points when we won uh is that when we won the stanley cup it might have been i'm not sure if it was i think it is because it has the only 20 something games so yeah that's more than likely when we won the stanley cup but obviously he went through a lot of heartbreak when we lost to tampa bay so many times in the first round but he was a really good player for us when we end up getting past like the first round which is nice shooting 25 percent that year as well for a playmaker is really good and then yeah preseason doesn't really matter too much but he was really good in it as well and then Caden Demon, who I believe I drafted the year afterwards. Yeah, I drafted him the year afterwards. So we drafted two good Caden players a year apart. And yeah, Caden Demon was another really good player in this franchise mode that could be a channel Hall of Famer. Over a thousand points, not as good point production as Matthews technically in his career, but a better goal scorer. Almost reached 400 goals by the end of this franchise mode. Uh, his best season looking like the 33 goal season that he had recently. Actually, never mind. He had a 39 goal season early in his career. I forgot about that. But yeah, he came over from Saginaw in the OHL. And then playoff wise, he was also pretty solid. Not as good again as Matthews, but 85 points in 100 games is pretty good. And yeah, when we won the Stanley Cup, I think it is, he had 22 points in 22 games. So that top line was doing a lot of good things for us that year. And then Andrew Garrison. Uh, this guy was an interesting one. We drafted this guy in the fifth round of 2031. And, uh, yeah, he was also a pretty solid player. He took a little bit to develop, obviously three years in Grand Rapids, but then he came into the NHL, started putting up some decent amount of points, and went from 17 points to 60 points in a year. So he all of a sudden just started putting up with points. And he's been on our top six for the last few years, and as you can see, he had over a point per game one year, but he did miss a lot of games due to injury. But he's been a pretty solid player. It's just the injury that uh, injuries that kind of uh, derailed his career a little bit in these last three years right here. And yeah, he missed a decent amount of games over that span. 
Playoff-wise, he had 31 points in 49 games, so he was also pretty helpful in the playoffs. Not as good as the top uh, line, obviously, but still good enough to give some good secondary scoring. And then we also have Isaac Dika, who was recently drafted a few years back, or actually quite a few years back now at this stage. Um, he's played a total of seven seasons now with us. He's got 377 points and 198 goals, so he's about to hit 200 goals. He's not been really that elite scorer we need, but I would assume eventually he would have been because he's 24 only, so I'd expect him to probably put up like a 50-goal season at some point, maybe a high 40-goal season. Uh, but yeah, he was a pretty good shooter, obviously, for us for these last two years, obviously scoring above 20 goals in almost every season of his career so far. And playoff-wise, he was also pretty good, 15 points in 13 playoff games, so... Uh, yeah, definitely a really good playoff player as well, and I would be excited to see if he ever got back to the playoffs if this was to go longer than the 25 years. Then we got Amir de Kaiser, who kind of bounced around, but we did bring him back. So, like, we brought him in originally from the Vegas Golden Knights. As you can see, he played a few years in Vegas. We made that blockbuster trade to bring him in for, I believe... It was like Max Beyer, and then there was like a couple other prospects like Craig Clymer and stuff like that. Can't remember the exact trade. I might throw a screenshot if I could find one of that exact trade. But uh, yeah, Amir de Kaiser came in, and then he uh, started putting up some good amount of points for us for multiple years. Eventually, though, what happened is his contract kind of ran out, so we had to uh, let him go to free agency, where he ended up going to Winnipeg. Actually, no, we traded him to Winnipeg. Never mind. We ended up having to trade him away because we weren't a good enough team. So we traded him to Winnipeg. He played there for a little bit, goes to Nashville, then to Calgary, San Jose, and then he finds his way back to us in free agency. And he's been still pretty solid, 60, 50 points, over 1,000 points in his career, over 530 goals. So definitely a good goal scorer to have on the team. And then playoff-wise, he had 84 points in 115 games. Most of those coming with us when we won the Stanley Cup back in 2035. I'm pretty sure that is. I'm pretty sure that's our cup winning season, and more than likely he is. Um, George Belanger, another one of these guys that was kind of interesting. We traded for him. He was actually an Islanders pick. Um, and a Hawks fan mentioned to trade for him, and we traded for him. And he's a pretty solid player as well. Very playmaker-y. <laughs> 42 goals, 240 assists for 282 points in 492 games. Not the greatest plus-minus, but uh, still a really good offensive player. And then in terms of playoff stats, he only has 10 assists in 13 games. Never scored a playoff goal, which is pretty crazy. But then again, he is a playmaker. So yeah, that guy was pretty good as well. Kind of curious on how his career would have continued. Uh, Noel Andrews doesn't really matter too much. We brought him in just recently, uh, like a couple years ago. Yeah, just last year actually even. Um, he's been pretty solid. He's not. He's a pretty good uh, like third-line scoring forward for most teams that he's played with. But uh yeah, we brought him in, and we didn't really utilize him that much, but he still put up 47 points in this last season, so he's not that bad of a player. And he only played seven playoff games with us with two goals, but uh, yeah, he's not much of a playoff producer anyways, it looks like, in his career. Then we got Phil Powell, who's been with us for his entire career. We drafted him back in the second round of 2030. Another really solid player, as you can see. Put up some decent numbers. His career numbers have bounced around a lot like 60, 50, 40, sometimes even 30-something points uh, because we have utilized him on our second line at some points and sometimes on our third line, but he's had a really long career, and it's been a pretty solid one. 603 points in two, uh, 976 games, over 200 goals, and over 300 assists, and he's an even zero in plus-minus, so he's not that bad in terms of plus-minus, but he has been a lot of minuses lately because this team hasn't been that good. And then in terms of playoff numbers, he's got 39 points in 68 games, so he's not that bad of a playoff player either, um, but obviously he does need to score a little bit more goals. He did have seven goals one year in the playoffs, but then afterwards he's only been able to score two goals each year since, so he's not that good anymore. He could be one of these guys that end up retiring in this episode, but we'll find out. And then Brett Reardon, he's barely played as well. Another one of these top prospects we drafted, the only three years in his career, over 116 points, which is pretty good. Um, and he also has five points in his only seven playoff games, so it sucks that we can't get to see Reardon's career unfold, but uh, he would have definitely been part of the future here on this team, alongside guys like Isaac Dika. Cameron Schumacher has barely played in the NHL, and uh, he played a long time in the AHL. He's also a pretty solid goal scorer, scoring over 15 goals in every single season so far in the NHL. 
And yeah, he's not that bad of a player. His plus minus is a little bit undesirable, but he's still a pretty good player. And playoff wise, he only has one goal in six games, which is not good, really. But maybe no, he, who knows? Maybe he would have scored more if we would have made the playoffs this year. Matt Scuffson just played his first season in the NHL and looks pretty promising. 30 points in 82 games. And in last year, he had 60 points in the AHL and the year before, 37 points. He looks like somebody that would have been uh, definitely a full-on roster player for most of it. Because look at his shooting category. He's pretty solid for a former 19th overall pick. Then we also have Jonathan Cialfito, who I drafted in the third round of 2035. Another pretty solid player for the most part. Averaging around 30 points a season, which is pretty nice. Definitely gives a little bit of tertiary scoring on this team. And in playoff wise, he doesn't really show up that much. Four points in 13 games, but still, you can't really ask much more of a bottom six player. And then we also got our defensive court. Let's get to our... De Actually, do we have any more forwards? Let me check, make sure. Because if we have any other forwards, I'll do them first. Uh, yeah, we got Bomick, who I don't think he even played really at all, right? Yeah, Bomick's only played two games, and he's 30 years old in the NHL, but he was a really good AHL player for us, in case you wanted to know about him. On to our defensive core. I think I showed you guys some of this stuff. Cali Lilia is only 23, so he's also a part of the future here in Detroit, but he's a pretty solid defenseman, 99 points in 409 games, a minus 14, so his plus minus isn't great, but he's been here in some of the worst years for the team. His rookie season so far is his best year with 29 points. And then playoff-wise, he only has two assists in 13 games, but he is a plus 5, which is pretty nice. Clayton Sampson, another part of this future of this team. He was drafted in uh, 2038 fourth overall. Another really good defensive defenseman. Minus 9 in his career, but 89 points. Um, he also has 388 penalty minutes, so he's a bit of a physical defenseman. And in terms of his playoff numbers, he's got 3 points in 13 games, and he's a plus 1. Marcos Biggs, who more than likely is going to retire in this episode, had a fantastic career to an extent. 676 points in 1,539 games. Obviously, the last few years of his career, he's not been putting up as good of points. And also, his plus minus was terrible in his last season, but... Still a really serviceable player. Obviously, he kind of lived in the shadow of uh, Tristan Wall, who we drafted as well. But, uh, yeah, Biggs was with us for a very long time, coming from Shikudemi of the QMJHL. And as you can see, he was drafted way back in 2025 at 5th overall, which I believe is one spot behind where Wall was drafted in a couple years before that, or he was drafted in the exact same spot, I can't remember. But, yeah, Marcos Biggs was a really good player in his prime. We also have, actually, did I take a look at his playoff numbers? No, I didn't. 44 points in 112 games. Definitely helped out the year we won the Stanley Cup and whatnot. Then we also got UC Hardikainen, who was a guy that we uh, traded for with, uh, we got in exchange, I believe, in the DeKaiser deal, because he came over from Winnipeg. So it must have been the DeKaiser trade that we got him in from. But yeah, he has 112 points in 489 games, which is pretty good. His plus minus is not that great because of his last season, but still he scored 11 goals one year, so he's actually not that bad of a two-way defender. And in playoff-wise, one assist in 13 games, so he really needed to start showing up a little bit more in the playoffs, it seems like. Then we go to Nicholas Stapleton, who we drafted 25th overall in 2033. He's been kind of an interesting one because one year we didn't really play him that much. We only played him in 27 games. He's more of a defensive defenseman again, but still not that bad of one. He had some good years, actually one good year in uh, Grand Rapids before we brought him up. But yeah, in the NHL-wise, he's not really cracked that much points in his career. And playoff-wise, three points in eight games, so he's not that bad playoff-wise. But as you can see, he's had a long career, but we've only been to the playoffs like two times. Or he's only played in the playoff two times since... Uh, getting into there. His plus minus is really good from the last playoff run, plus seven in seven games. And then we go to Demetrius Rodriguez, who uh, we drafted in the second round of 2038. He only played a little bit recently. He dropped off to a 74 because of morale, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's morale issues. Not that it matters right now anymore, but uh, 24 points only in 244 games. A lot of penalty minutes as well. Definitely more of a physical defender, but he does put up good points in like the uh, AHL and he did in the OHL too. And his only playoff uh, series, he uh, put up four points in seven games, which is pretty good considering he only put up six points last year, or five points last year in, uh, in the regular season, and then he won almost point per game in the playoffs. 
So he might be a better playoff player than a regular season one, which is interesting. And then Fabian Cracknell, I don't think matters too much. This guy we just signed, yeah, in free agency, six games, and he's 33 years old, and he's a minus five. Like, he hadn't played a game in 11 years, which is pretty crazy. Then we go to goaltending Magnus Stevenson, or Maximus Stevenson, not Magnus Stevenson. I don't know why I thought of that. Um, he's been not that great of an elite goalie that we need to. Like, he's had a really good season, like, way back here. But most of his seasons, he's below an 800 save percentage, or below a uh, 900 save percentage, which is not that great. His AHL numbers were really good, but uh, NHL-wise, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of how Maximus Stevenson turned out. His playoff numbers are not that great either. So, uh, yeah, he's barely played in the playoffs, actually. But, uh, yeah, he's not that great of a goalie. And I don't think, yeah, he never won a Vesna trophy. So, that is Stevenson. And then Sohonen doesn't really matter that much because we only just brought him in this year. He was actually not too bad. And let's quickly go to the OH, or AHL because we do have Rohan Howes down there who is more than likely going to retire. He played down there in the minors for his final season. was pretty solid because the team is pretty good down there. But in his career, obviously, he was a good player for us for a long time. We originally drafted him, when was it? Second round of 2023. So way back. And as you can see, he played a long time with us in the NHL, having some pretty good seasons. Some below average seasons. One really good season there when he went to Anaheim. Actually, when he went to Anaheim, he won two Vezina trophies, if I'm not mistaken, and some Stanley Cups, too, to boot. But, uh, yeah, he was really good in Anaheim, especially these two years. Then he kind of dropped off a little bit, but he was still really dominant in Anaheim. Is that Anaheim team is good, but then all of a sudden Anaheim started dropping off, and then eventually he would go to free agency where we would scoop him back up, and we would play him for his last two years almost, and then he'd play in the AHL, so... Yeah, very good career from him. 526 wins, 303 losses, 69 OT losses, and 59 shutouts. It's a 907 save percentage and 2.8 goals against average. I would say he's also one of those guys that could be a channel Hall of Famer alongside of Matthews and Dingman and probably Marcos Biggs. And then in terms of the playoffs, 72, 51, and 8. 8 shutouts, a 904 save percentage and a 301 goals against average. Obviously, that last playoff run kind of deflated his stats a little bit, but... Uh, that's okay. And I think that's it. This Henry DeMaio guy probably would have made the NHL if he would have played or played sooner. Dundas. Yeah, we would have had a lot of guys that could have cracked into our lineup eventually. It just sucks that we're never going to be able to see most of these guys get to the NHL or all these guys. So yeah, we just have a lot of random guys down here in the NHL. I don't think any of them's played in the NHL. I think Lutzer played a little bit last year. Yeah, let's play it a little bit. Three points in five games, but that's it pretty much. Hmm. Okay, so that is a recap on our player stats. Let's take a look at all the records across the league, and then we'll sim to the awards and the retirements. And yeah, that'll be pretty much it, I think, at that stage for this episode. So let's just go through each individual team. We'll go to us last, again, just because it's good to see what our team is like last. But uh, Anaheim... Um, any familiar players? Danny Asham, don't think I remember who he is. Because I'm trying to see if there's any players that I recognize. So Rohan Howes had the most wins in a season by an Anaheim Ducks goalie at the end of it in 2034 when he had 41 wins. So that's pretty cool. Also, Jero Stillman is up there. I remember uh, he was a really good goal scorer for like Montreal as well at one point. Or he's still in Montreal right now, but yeah, I remember him for sure. Rookie records, anything for interesting. Game records, Jero Stillman had four goals in a game. Apparently Kuznetsov also had six points in a game with the Anaheim Ducks. Huh. So Rohan has only has one record with this uh, Anaheim Ducks team. He didn't get the most wins in Anaheim Ducks history because John Gibson has that. We go to Arizona, and Ali DeKaiser currently has the most points for mo uh, Arizona Coyotes players, but obviously all-time it's Clayton Keller. Not really any interesting names there and stuff for Ali DeKaiser because Ali DeKaiser was somebody we drafted and eventually had to let go and uh, he went and signed in Arizona and he's been pretty good for Arizona. Season records for Arizona, anything there that's interesting to bring up? Not really. Uh, rookie records, obviously nobody's going to beat Solani's record because that's like impossible. And game records, no as well. Boston Bruins-wise, what do we got here? 
Obviously, like these original six teams, not a lot of players are going to beat records, but you never know. Season record wise, Magnus Gunnarsson getting up there. I remember playing him, I'm pretty sure, in the playoffs at one point. 107 assists in one season. Wow. I didn't realize he had 107 assists in one year. That's crazy. What else we got here? Rookie records. No rookie records have been broken. And game records. Obviously, nothing's been broken either. We go to the Buffalo Sabres. Yanni Kukinen is almost the all time best player in Buffalo Sabres history, but Jack Eichel is there. But uh, yeah, Kukinen is an insane player. Like, uh,. Yeah, he's the all-time uh, goal leader for the Buffalo Sabres now. He's got 827 goals in his career. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, that guy was a stud for them when Buffalo was, like, uh, winning a lot of presidents' trophies and stuff like that. And season records, uh, Lincoln Marlowe, who's the goalie I was looking to sign at one point, uh, has the most wins in the season for a Buffalo Sabres with 43. Rookie record-wise, nobody's broken anything. And game record-wise... Uh, Taylor Hall apparently had 8 points in a game in 2026 where he also had 7 assists that's crazy that might be the highest point total for a game in this uh, franchise mode um, what else we got uh, anything else go through this a little bit no records broken there and on there and game record wise nobody broke, broke anything there either hmm Seems like not a lot of broken records in this so far. A couple of them, but Sebastian Ajo and stuff like that are up there for games played for Carolina, which is not really a surprise. Valery Berzgalov has the most goals, though, in Carolina Hurricanes history with 502. I believe he was a franchise player that played once with Philippe Guerron, a former player of ours. Um, anything else that's interesting? It looks like some records broken in Carolina, like Savoy had 87 assists one year. Game record wise, not a thing. I don't th actually wait a second. Rookie record wise, Benj uh, Benjamin Barney in this last season that we just had had 30 goals in a rookie season or 30 wins in a rookie season, and that is a new Carolina Hurricanes record. And game record wise, nothing was broken. Seems like the game records, nothing ever gets broken really that much. Uh, Francois Como, most points in Chicago Blackhawks history. Wow, that's an incredible feat for him. Beating a lot of guys like Bobby Hull and stuff like that. Over 1,400 points and over 1,400 games played as well. He was almost point per game in his career, that guy. I remember when he retired like last season, I think it was, uh, mentioning his name. He's a really good player, or was a good player. 786 goals as well. Then we go to season records. Anything bet broken. Francois Como had the most goals in a season by a Blackhawk. 59 goals, almost hitting 60 goals one year for him. And game record-wise, Braylon Bomeister had 8 points in a game recently for Chicago. That is a record. Interesting. I wonder who had the best or most before that. And in Colorado Avalanche-wise, Kale McCarr obviously up there for games played. Not a surprise there. Braden Henley, the most goals in Colorado Avalanche history. So he beat out Joe Sackick. 781 goals. I know he was a really good goal scorer because he had like one year where he had like 81 goals in 82 games or something ridiculous like that. But, uh, yeah, Braden Henley, best Colorado goal scorer of all time, beating out Joe Sackick. Um, and he also had the most yeah, goals in the season, 81 goals, as I was just mentioning, just last year, which is absolutely nuts. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that before. And in game records, there was one. Cesar Boyclair had six assists in a game in 2038. We go to Columbus. This is going to take a little bit, so this episode might end up being a decently long episode, so I apologize for that. But this is kind of cool to look through all this stuff, so it might take a, bi a while. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets-wise, Elliot Colborne, 43 goals in the season is a record. Pierre-Luc Dubois, 99 points in the season is a record for a Blue Jacket. So no Blue Jackets ever cracked 100 points. In an Almquist with the most assists in a Blue Jacket season with 77 back in 2033. And game records, Colton Ryopel had 25, uh, not game records, never mind. Rookie records had 25 goals in a season. Gaspard LeBlanc had 59 points in a season. And that's pretty much that. Game records wise, Ryan Dezingle had six points in a game in 2025 for Columbus, and that it was their record. We go to the Dallas Stars, and then we'll go to the Edmonton Oilers because we're going to skip us for now. 
Uh, so Dallas, uh, no records there. Tyler Sagan, actually the best goal scorer all of all time in Dallas Stars history, though. 620 goals. Season records, uh, none broken. And rookie records, Vyacheslav Zharkov, 22 goals in the season, or 22 wins in the season, jeez, uh, was a rookie record, which is kind of interesting because Marty Turco was really good in his prime, so I'm kind of surprised about that. And then uh, game records, Ashton Booz had 6 assists in 2040 as a record for the Dallas Stars. We now head to the Edmonton Oilers. Not a surprise, Connor McDavid up there in points and games played over 1,700 points in his career. Being out Wayne Gretzky, and actually not Wayne Gretzky, because it's actually just doing Wayne Gretzky stats for when he was with the Oilers, I'm pretty sure. But uh, being on Wayne Gretzky stats with Edmonton at least. Um... And that's that. What else we got here? Season records. Nothing interesting, really. Rookie records. Matthias Lundberg had 51 goals in the rookie season, which is nuts. Back in 2034. Pierre Huea had 30 wins in a rookie season in 2029, which is a record. And game record-wise, Connor McDavid never beat Wayne Gretzky's point holes for a game, which is kind of surprising. We go to the Florida Panthers... Barkov obviously up there in a lot of stats, which is not a surprise. Um, season record-wise, anything interesting. Michael Ozelinch, who I believe played also with Boston when we played them a couple times. 97 points in a season is a record for them. Oscar Bemstrom had 80 assists in a season, which is a record for them. And Fabian Arcobello with 36 wins in a rookie season. Or not a rookie season, a season is a record Rookie-wise, uh, Joel Flynn, 27 goals in a season is a record. 27 assists for Justin Schrader is a record, or wins for Justin Schrader. And that's that. And game record-wise, nothing was broken. Actually, wait, maybe something was. No, nope, that was, actually, maybe so. Because that would have been in year one, I think, or maybe, no, that might have been, yeah, that might not have been in this game. I'm not too sure. Los Angeles Kings-wise, Anze Kopitar drew Doughty up there a couple times. Same with Jonathan Quick. Not really a surprise there. Jack Johnson still has the most games played. It says, the heck, it's weird that they put Jack Johnson there. Igor Shesterkin has the most wins in an LA Kings season with 43 back in 2028. Not really a surprise because he was a really good goalie for Buffalo and for LA. And then rookie record-wise, nothing was broken. And game record-wise, nothing was broken. Hmm. Minnesota. Gaspard Richard has the most points all time by Minnesota, which is not really a surprise because there's not really a lot of like uh, a lot of Minnesota players don't stay there their entire careers or that long. Jonas Brodin had the most games played though in Minnesota Wilds history, and Cyrus Hawes had like the most wins and shutouts in their history. Season record wise, Connor Arcobello, whoever that is, had 271 penalty minutes in this last season that we just had, so that's interesting. He has a record for that. So he beat out like Matt Johnson, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Jeffrey Brophy had the most goals in a rookie season. Or not a rookie season, just a season in general. Never mind. 46 uh, goals. And then Trevor Wong had the most points in the season in 2037 with 106. And assist-wise was a year afterwards with 71 assists. We go to rookie records. Cole Sillinger had a rookie record with 42 assists. Wesley Keith had a rookie record with three shutouts. Noel Andrews, who we actually have on our roster, had 27 goals in his rookie season, which is a record. Cyrus Hawes has a record of 21 wins. And Ulf Arvidsson, 56 points, is a rookie record. Game record-wise, no records were broken. Actually, Zuccarello might have got one in year one, number one. Or maybe that's... Yeah, that might be year number one. Montreal Canadiens-wise, obviously nobody's going to beat a lot of these historic records, but Carey Price with the most wins in uh, Montreal Canadiens history of 444. Just in case any of you Habs fans wanted to know about that. Uh, Ken Blacker actually broke an assist record in the season. He had 91 assists one year back in 2039, so a couple years back. Rookie records, nothing was broken. Not really a surprise. And game records, nothing was broken. Because Montreal obviously has a lot of guys from way back in the day. Nashville Predators, Ola Olsen, the most points in the game. He was a really good player for them. Eli Tovenin up there for quite a few things as well. And Ole Olsen also up there for goals with 537. Season record-wise, uh, there was a couple broken, a couple from Ole Olsen with goals and points in the season, both in 2032 and 2033. 
Stefan Burkov had the most assists in the season with 70 in 2036. Rookie record-wise, uh, Burkov had the most assists in a rookie season with 66. Camden Marchment, 30 goals in a rookie season. And Stefan Burkov, 81 points in a rookie season. Game record-wise, there was one, which is Burkov had 6 assists in a game in 2036. And Ola Olsen had 7 points in a game in 2030. We head to the New Jersey Devils. Jack Hughes up there, obviously, for quite a few things. Nico Hiche as well. Season record-wise, Davis McCauley had the most goals in the season with uh, 55, which is interesting. Rookie record-wise, Jalen Ritchie, the most shutouts in the season with 5, which beats out Martin Broder, I think, because I don't remember how, how much Martin Broder had in his rookie season, but it was probably nowhere near that much. Um, and that is pretty much that. Game record, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, most assist in season 4 New Jersey with 6 back in 2026. And Isaiah Eves. Most goals in a uh, game with five. Hmm. We head to the New York Islanders. Matthew Barzell obviously up there for a couple things. And Jaden Rabbit up there for shutouts in or and shutouts in a career. Yeah, shutouts in his career. I was going to say in the season. And I was like, 35 shutouts in the season. Um, but yeah, that's a record. Wait, that Anthony Bovelli won, uh, won is for games played. Okay. Then we go to season records. Rabbit had eight shutouts in 2031, which is a record. That's the only one. Rookie record-wise, Rabbit had 35 wins in his rookie season. And game record-wise, that was nothing there. The New York Rangers, Damian Hamilton, not really surprised. The all-time leader in points in New York Rangers history. He's only played 12 seasons as well, which is kind of crazy. Um, and I don't, I think Ron Greshner is a real player. And in, uh, all-time goals for the Rangers, Damian Hamilton is the leader up there with 613. Obviously, he would keep adding to that probably next season, unless he went to free agency, which there's a good chance he could have actually. So, who knows? Um, Damian Hamilton had the most goals in the season, which is 70. Yes, Barry Kotkaniemi had 87 assists in a season, which is a record. And Boyer had 45 wins in a season, which is a record. Rookie-wise, Francois Ouellette had the most assists in a rookie season with 53. Game record-wise, nothing there. We go to the Ottawa Senators now. Anthony Bolton, most points in the season, beating out Alfredson with 1,246 points. Um, what else we got here? Isaiah Curtis, the most wins in team history with 203. We had Isaiah Curtis for a bit which is interesting, and Anthony Bolton, the most goals in a career with 669, beating out Alfredson as well. Season record-wise, Anthony Bolton had the most goals in the season with 58, beating out like guys like Danny Heatley and whatnot. Um, also, most points in the season with 106, that was the same season. Doug Robbins had the most assists in a year, which was 2041. He had 73 assists, and Isaiah Curtis had the most wins in a season with 40, and I believe that was the season we knocked him out in the first round or second round, if I'm not mistaken. Rookie-wise, Peyton McLeod, most goals in a season by a rookie with 42, which is pretty crazy. And game record-wise, nothing was broken. We go to the Philadelphia Flyers. Dominic Smaby, most assists for Philadelphia. That's the only EA generated guy there. We go to points in the season wise, nothing was broken. Rookie record wise, uh, Dominic maybe had 55 assists in his rookie season. And Dylan Genther had 86 points in his rookie season, which is pretty crazy. I remember he was really good with the Flyers when they were winning cups and stuff too. And that's pretty much that. We go to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Obviously, a lot of Crosby, Malkin. And Lemieux is still, obviously. Yeah, a lot of these records are probably not going to be broken. Yeah, there's like no records broken in Pittsburgh at all. Because Pittsburgh is just, uh, it has way too good of players in their history. You go to the San Jose Sharks. Damian P or Damon Pete, uh, all-time best player for San Jose with over 1,600 points. Caden Ricci, the most assist in his career with over 1,000 assists. Probably setting up Damon Pete, I would assume. And then, well, it's Patrick Marlowe obviously up there for games played. Jeff Auger still is there for penalty minutes, so nobody beat that. Damon Pete up there for goals with 762. So, yeah, Pete and Ricci more than likely played together most of their careers. 
Um, then we go to the season records. Damon Pete most goals, 59, and most points, 120. Then we go to game rec or rookie records. Nothing was broken. And game records, Shane Wright had five assists in a game in 2025. We go to the St. Louis Blues. Kari Savonen most points in a career with 1,413 points. And Igor Kondratiev had 1,385 games played. He's the most in... Yeah, I, yeah, he's not a real player. I know that for sure. Um, and Kari Savonen most goals in a career 749. Almost at 750. Obviously, we had him for a little bit. Season record-wise, no records were broken. Rookie record-wise, nothing was broken. And game record-wise, nothing was broken, which is kind of surprising, too. We go to Tampa Bay. Braden Point up there for a couple of things. Andre Vasilevsky, Stamkos, obviously, like the current team in real life. Season record-wise, nothing was broken, really. Rookie record-wise, Dante Wellwood had three shadows in a rookie season in 2035. Ludwig Enroth had 32 goals in a rookie season in 2028. And Darren Haynes had a, uh, 38 wins in a rookie season in 2037. We go to game records, and the only one is Victor Hedman had six assists in 2024. We go to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mitch Marner up there for a lot of stuff. I guess Austin Matthews left kind of early on. But Austin Matthews is up there in goals with 587. Season record-wise, Timo Valahadi with the most goals in the season with 66. Obviously, he's still there on that team. He was drafted the same year as we got uh, Isaac Dika. He was the first overall pick, I'm pretty sure. And then Marcel Paris had 38 wins in his rookie season in 2042. And game record-wise, nothing was broken. We go to Vancouver. A lot of Elias and Brock still. Yep. Season record-wise, anything was broken. Sergei Korolyuk had 114 points in the season, which is a record. Uh, rookie record-wise, Clarence Martinuk, five shutouts in a rookie season is a record. Michael DiPietro had the most wins in a rookie season with 32. And Yerky until at 76 points in a rookie season in 2039. And game record-wise, there was one, which is Jeffrey Brophy, five goals in a game in 2043. More than likely beating out like Pavel Bure. We go to Vegas. Uh, Cody keeping most points in a career. Um, Jason Danner, I believe, is also a uh, EA generated guy. 905 penalty minutes in his career. And Carter Hart up there for wins for Vegas, which is kind of funny. And Harold Ho, who's still currently with them, is most goals with 378. Season record wise, Jason Danner, 2039, had 178 penalty minutes. Harold Ho had 56 goals in the season in 2041 and had 106 points in 2039. Cody Keeping had 71 assists in a game or season in uh, 2039, so the same year that Harold Ho is really good. We go to rookie record wise, Melvin Emery, who was drafted the same year also, is Isaac Dika, 43 assists in a rookie season. And then Torsten Olin, two shoutouts in a rookie season. Harold Ho, 44 goals in a rookie season. Jeez, that's a really good rookie year. Nicholas Riley, 20 wins in a rookie season, and Harold Ho, 83 points in a rookie season. Game record-wise, Harold Ho had 5 goals in a game in 2037, and William Nylander had 6 points in 2032. Most saves in a game came in 2021 from Marc-Andre Fleury. And finally, we got Washington and Winnipeg, and then we go to us, so that's good. So Washington, a lot of Alex Ovechkin, not really a surprise there. Season records... Most of it, yeah. John Carlson had 83 assists in 2024, which is a record. Rookie record-wise, Asher Bootland most assists in a rookie season with 59. Obviously, nobody's going to beat Ovechkin, though. <laughs> Game record-wise, nothing was broken, and that is that for Washington. We head to the Winnipeg Jets and Patrick Laine up there. Valerie Karpetsev played the most seasons with uh, Winnipeg, 17 years, which is pretty crazy. Over 600 goals as well. Season record-wise, the most for them, Connor Hellbuck, 8 shutouts in the season, Anthony Paggio, the most goals, 54, Gordy Gormley, over 112 points, or well, actually 112 points, and 99 assists in a 2039 season, both records, and rookie records, UC Koskinen, 5 shutouts in a rookie season, and Stanislav Bobkov, 32 wins in a season, and game records... 
Cole Perfetti had the most assists and points in a, se in a game with 5-7. and seven. And that is those records. Now we go to us, which should be mostly interesting because we actually know all these players. So, obviously nobody beat any uh, career records because Gordy Howe played way too much games. Steve Eisenman was way too good, that type of thing. So none of those were broken, but our current record holders are uh, Matthews with over a thousand, ga uh, over twelve hundred games. Most seasons, Marcos Biggs was trying to chase Gordy Howe, but he more than likely is going to retire this. Still, uh, Matthews is actually almost uh, beating Eiserman in assists, which is pretty awesome. I don't know if he would have if he retires this year. Games played wise, uh, Marcos Biggs almost catching Gordy Howe as well, which is awesome. Penny minutes wise, Dingman's nowhere close to Probert. And yeah, Stevenson never got close to Sawchuk at all. Goal-wise, yeah, Caden Dingman probably would never have caught up to Howe. Season records, uh, we didn't have anybody break any season records either. Closest we got was in terms of pretty much nothing. Actually, maybe assists. Yeah, Caden Matthews had 74 assists in the season, which almost hit Eisenman's 90. But that's pretty much the closest uh, season record we had. Rookie record-wise, nothing was broken either. And game record-wise, nothing was broken. So we really didn't break any records on our team, which kind of sucks. We go to the NHL for this just for quickly. So game record-wise, we'll just take a look and see if there's anybody that's EA generated that got up there. So apparently Joe Stillman had 900 goals, but I know he didn't. Because for some reason it adds more goals for some of these players. But yeah, Gerald Stillman was nowhere near that close to being a top 5 player. But uh, Kari Savonen definitely was up there behind Alex Ovechkin for most all time. With over 900 goals, I'm pretty sure. We go to points. Uh, Nathan McKinnon up there, which is interesting. I don't know if he actually had that much. Because this part's a little bit broken. Yes, I don't think like Cal Peterson had over 500 wins. Marc-Andre Fleury definitely did. Martin Jones, I don't think, did either, so it's kind of like a glitch. Yanni Kukunen, most 50-goal seasons. Him and Kari Savonen both had nine 50-goal seasons. So they were the best two players in this franchise mode, pretty much for scoring goals. And that's that. Let's take a look at season records, see if anything was broken. Oh, Braden Henley, most goals in the season. and actually got into top five all-time behind Lemieux, Hull, Gretzky, and Gretzky. Not a surprise. So that's interesting. Anything else? A lot of these ones don't get broken, though, I find. Because they're really hard to beat because the scoring's not as good as it used to be. Uh, most goals in a rookie season. Lundberg had 51, which tied Joe Neuendijk for fourth all-time. Uh, Stefan Burkhoff, most assists in a rookie season, was third all-time just behind Joe Juno and Peter Statsny. Most points in the season, nothing... Oh, there's one as well. Darren Haynes, the most wins in a rookie season, was tied for fourth with Don Edwards. And just behind Ken Dryden, Ed Belfort, and Terry Sawchuk. And that is that. Okay, so that's all the records. Now we got to simulate just to see who retires this year. And we also got to see who wins the Stanley Cup and the awards. And then that'll be it for this video. So I'm, I apologize if this video is long. It's over 40 minutes right now as I'm recording this. So hopefully uh, you guys had a fun episode at least with this one. Sucks that we didn't get to the playoffs, though, because I would have preferred going through, like, the playoff simulation and stuff like that, but the boys didn't make it back, so at least the AHL team seems like they made the playoffs, so who knows, maybe they'll win a Calder Cup. They've won two rounds now. If the AHL team was in Calder Cup in the last year, that would be at least nice. They're going to the finals. Come on, Grand Rapids. Win the Calder Cup, please, for us. Give us something to cheer about, and they're going to lose in the finals, I think, to the Hartford Wolfpack. Damn, that sucks. And Boston wins the Stanley Cup which is interesting. Let's take a look at those Stanley Cup winning Boston Bruins as well, because I'm kind of curious on who's on that team. Because I'm not going to go through what each team's roster looks like at this stage, but uh, this is basically what their roster looks like. I don't think there's any former players. There's this Threfall guy who went, I think it was right before we got uh, Dika or right afterwards. I remember him from that same year draft, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, this is basically the cup winning Bruins team for the final season. Goalie wise, oh yeah, Justin Schrader, yeah, that guy's good. And Caden Rizzi. Hmm. So that is that. Let's take a look at the playoff tree just to see who was in the finals. It was Boston beating Edmonton in seven games. So a rematch of 1990. Yeah, a rematch of 1990. 
Interesting. So Boston went through Buffalo, Toronto, uh, both in seven games. Went through New Jersey in five, and then went through Edmonton in seven. So, yeah, that was a lot of games for Boston to get to that Stanley Cup, but they managed to win it. I believe they hadn't won one in this uh, series, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, so Boston Stanley Cup champions, Toronto, the President's Trophy winners. It was Boston and Edmonton in the Cup Finals. Valahadi is going to win another Art Ross for the second straight year, and he also wins his first Hart in a couple of years as well. Uh, James Norris is going to go to Commissaric for the third straight season, so Colorado is still really good at scoring goals. Lady Bing going to Valahadi for the first time in four years or so as well. Garing wins the Calder for the National Predators. Mironov wins the Consmite for Boston. Eric Malone is going to win the Vesna for the third straight year for Chicago. And then Downey wins the William Jennings for Colorado, him in Fawcett. Simmons is going to win the Bill Masterton for Philadelphia. Chris Danovich for Anaheim is going to win the Jack Adams. Ricci is going to win the Selkie. Valhadi wins the Lindsay. And Sonnenberg is going, or Sonnenberg and Valhadi are going to tie for the Richard. So a lot of awards for uh, Valhadi in Toronto. And then AHL wise, I don't think we had any awards down there. No, we did not. Actually, let me take a look at the playoff tree in the AHL quickly because I'm kind of curious on it. Yeah, we lost in seven games in the final. Our AHL team came so close to winning the Calder Cup. Let me just take a look at the player stats in that Calder Cup run. So Earl was doing most of it. And then goalie-wise, uh, DeMaio got all the starts pretty much, and he was fantastic. Hmm. Sucks that I'm never going to get to see DeMaio play because he would have been probably a good NHL goalie at some point. Or he might have ended up like Stevenson, you never know. So that is that. And now we got to sim just to see who retires in this final season. I believe if we would have continued on a little bit longer, there would have been only one more season left of this anyways. But uh, we would have still stayed at number 7, which is good. So we didn't win the draft lottery. So no ultimate troll by EA. Thank God for that. Because if we would have had the first overall pick, I would have been like, of course, right in the last year, we get it. <laughs> But retirement-wise for this final season, so Magnus Gunnarsson is the best player to retire with over 1,300 points. Any former players of ours, so that's where I'm more interested in. Marcos Biggs retires in last season. That sounds about right. 676 points, as I was mentioning, in 1,539 games. Since we already looked at his stats, I won't go through his player card again, but uh, best of luck in retirement, Marcos. You were a really good player for us in your prime. At least we won you one Stanley Cup over that span. Anybody else interesting? I don't think so. Actually, no, there is one. Veli Savonin, a former defenseman of ours that we had for a while. We eventually traded him away to Colorado. He played in Buffalo and in Tampa Bay. Really good plus minus and a really good defensive defenseman. But uh, we had to let him go because of our upcoming defenders. But yeah, very good player. And in playoff wise, he also was pretty solid as well. And I think, yeah, he was a part of the cup winning team, I'm pretty sure. So that's also good. Anybody else that used to play for us? I don't think so. Verkunen, I recognize that name, but I don't think he ever did, right? And I don't think he did. Some of these players I recognize from when we had matchups against them in the playoffs. I think, yeah, we definitely had Emilio Correa at one point. Yeah, he played a couple of years here. Nothing too special, though. Not a channel legend by any means. Um, George Ouellette, no, never did. Yeah, this guy definitely never did. Anything else? Doesn't look like it. Was Solovyov drafted by us? No, he wasn't. He was drafted by Nashville. Different Coley Mine and not the one we had because he already retired. And that's it for that. Goalie wise, Rohan House is also going to retire. So, yeah, this is definitely a good point to end the series for sure. Rohan House, like I said. The best goalie of all time in terms of our Detroit Red Wings franchise mode, I think. He could definitely be a channel Hall of Famer, I would say. Best of luck in retirement, Rohan, with your over 500 wins, which is way more than Nico Puka, who was second. Anybody else? I don't think so. Did we draft his Olin dude? Yeah, we did. Okay, I did recognize his name. We drafted this guy at one point in the sixth round. Never played him in the NHL. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. He ended up playing in the NHL in his last season, and he was really actually pretty solid. Huh. Or actually, that wasn't in his last season. That was in one of his last season, or 10 years ago almost. 
Um, and that is it for goalie retirement. So the only retirements we have in our final season, Marcos Biggs and Rohan Howes, two channel legends for sure. Both drafted in a couple years apart. Yeah, both drafted a couple years apart. Oh, that sucks to see them retired, but whatever. That's what happens in these final episodes. Ozil Lynch becomes a scout. Okay. And that is that, I think. Yep, that is it. So, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this Detroit Red Wings franchise mode. I would like to thank you guys who have watched this entire series, or if you just watched bits and parts of the series. It's been a lot of fun. Obviously, I dragged it out a lot longer than I should have, but at least we won one Stanley Cup with these team, and we've had some pretty good channel legends. I would say the big ones being Matthews, Dingman, Howes, Biggs, Wall, who I actually forgot to mention at Wall's play or career stats. I wrote it down. Um, Wall had 751 points in 1,441 games, and then in the playoffs he had 57 points in 109 games. But yeah, we had a lot of good channel legends, and it was a fun series to do. So anyways, let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll see you guys in NHL 22.